All right, hi everybody. It is Saturday evening, <laughs> and that means it's time for Cooking with Carolina. You'll have to excuse me if I'm a little hoarse today. I've been doing a lot of yelling. It's a great day here, <laughs> and tonight will also be a wonderful night for cooking. So we are going to make this evening trumpets. These are fancy, fancy trumpets, a uh, pasta trumpets, and porcini butter sauce will be one of the things we'll be making, and then we'll also be making a ribeye steak. So this program is sponsored by the Library Friends of Oak Bluffs, and you might notice that I have a little donation thingy on there. Please do donate if you are able. We really need it this year because we couldn't have a book sale, and so we are low on our funds. We could use all your help, and we very much appreciate it. So let's get started. The first thing we are going to do is, let's see, you can't, well, you can kind of see it a little here. So I've been soaking some dried porcini mushrooms here to reconstitute them. So I got the dried mushrooms and those needed to be reconstituted. To reconstitute them, you can cover them in water. It can be room temperature or warm. And then you can add, if you want, like a little wine, something like that, to spruce it up a little. I did add just a, a touch of white wine in there to give it a little extra flavor. And so they've been soaking for about half an hour. They should be good to go now. And what we'll want to do is strain them out. So you can do this using your hands or you can get like a little kitchen strainer sort of you know, like something like this we'll use and you want to get the excess moisture out now one of the reasons you want to do this rather than dump it into the sink strainer like you would pasta is because you want to preserve oh. <clears throat> is because you want to preserve those mushroomy juices that have been created which you can use in a broth or stock so there's not much to a really squeeze out of them. You just gently press on them. Just a few more. Some of these look like bark. Okay, that is all of them. And so you can see here how rich and brown the water is from their soaking. And it's very, very flavorful. Can be a little overpowering, so do be careful when you use it. But it's very, very good. So these are already pretty sliced up. You know, if you want to break up some of the larger pieces, you could. But you don't really need to do much with these since they're already sliced so thinly. So I'll put those to the side. a towel and now let's uh, get some garlic ready to go here we'll use about three cloves A 
heal them. I was thinking earlier today about the garlic that you can get pre-peeled in the jars, which I got one time and I wasn't that thrilled with the flavor. And they also went bad pretty quickly. So I tend to go with fresh garlic, but sometimes it seems like that would be awfully convenient. But really, garlic isn't too hard. I shouldn't jinx myself. All right, and so now that we are peeled, we're just gonna smash them. We're gonna use the flat side of the knife down near the base, near the handle, and that's a good place for smashing. It's also kind of a satisfying thing to do. All right. All right, nice and smashed. Now, we will be heating up some oil and butter, some olive oil and some butter, and a nice big pan that we have here with straight sides. And we'll heat that on about medium. use about a quarter cup of the olive oil and about four tablespoons of butter. So I will use my measure this time just to be sure we have the proper amount. Quarter cup is not a not stingy. And of course, you do want to use a nice high quality extra virgin olive oil, the EVOO, and some butter. melted. <laughs> I have Delila. And while we're waiting for this to melt, we'll put it up just a little higher. And of course, we'll get our spurtle. I'm so amused by the spurtle because I don't know about anybody else, but for the past four days I've been watching CNN pretty much nonstop. And there have been infomercials for Spurtles. It really cracked me up. I, I thought it was really great. I'm glad that they share my love of Spurtles. They really are quite a handy kitchen tool. And so simple. So I'm just rolling the butter around, getting it all nice and melty and mixed with the oil. Garlic already smells so good. I love garlic. All right, we got some sizzle going there, so we'll put in our garlic. Now today I'm following a recipe that I found here in, oh, in Martha Stewart Living. And so I'm just doing what it says, oh, actually it's, I'm not, it says four cloves garlic. One more. Good thing I look. All right, smash it and put it in too. And we'll get this going. 
cooking up just a little bit, get that garlic to release the flavor. just a minute. So while we're doing this, I have already filled up a nice big pot full of water for our pasta. I do like to use a very big pot and a lot of water to cook my pasta. And so we'll go ahead and turn that on, get it boiling, because that takes a little while. And now let's go ahead and put our mushrooms in. A little. See, one of the many uses of this pearl. You can use it to strain off excess liquid. You really want to make sure that there's not extra water or liquid in your mushrooms because that will make that oil pop and sizzle at you. Okay, so let's put in our mushrooms here. Oh, it smells really good. down just a little bit. I'm going to add some salt. Just a nice pinch. And then we're actually going to let this cook about 10 or 15 minutes. And we will stir it on occasion. Now, Now it's time to get the steak ready to put on the grill. So with steak, you know, everybody seems to do their steak differently. I am a bit of a purist, I will say. These are some Whopper steaks that I got today. It's kind of a celebration. I gotta say. So we take out our, these are some boneless ribeye. Wash the hens. And then I just like to salt and pepper the exterior. You know, I've tried a lot of different ways, putting like a Worcestershire sauce on or sometimes garlic powder like that. But really, I think it's best just salt and pepper. You let the meat shine. I do salt the exterior fairly heavily. I'm using my Malden's sea salt that I love so much, the sea salt flakes. Definitely a favorite of mine. And just a little pepper. So, now we are actually gonna take a little field trip. So, let's see, we'll grab some tongs. and grab our steak and take it out to the grill.
it's too bad it wasn't a little earlier. We had really beautiful skies tonight. It was, it was red sky at night, sailor's delight. But now you can see, there we go. <laughs> so here I am at the grill. Woo! The grill is hot. I did turn this on before the show started, just so we'd be ready. There we go. <laughs> And now I'm just uh, scraping it off. Woo, hot stuff. I'm gonna turn it down just to about a medium, just cause the flame, it's pretty warm right now. Then take our steak, smack it on there. There we go. And then close her up. And what we'll do is to set a timer for four minutes. So I'm gonna go here to my kitchen timer on the stove, set it for four minutes. Okay, good to go. Now let's stir our mushrooms here. Another little cutting board out. And now, while we're doing this, we can da, da, da. we'll chop up some parsley for this, which we need about a half a cup of some heavy parsley action. So I think I'll use yeah, about half of this little bunch here. uneven surface that drives me crazy for chopping. As you can see, my kitchen is in dire need of a remodel. Someday. Now it doesn't say to mince the garlic, so I will chop it, but not too finely. That's probably good enough. And that's probably about half a cup, maybe a little more. No problem. So our mushrooms look pretty darn cooked. So what we'll do now for this is to add some red pepper flakes. We'll add about a quarter of a teaspoon. But of course you can adjust that depending on your spiciness. Here, but our time. 
timer is about to go off for our steak. So, are you ready? All right, there's our timer for our steak. So now we run out back to this, back to the grill. And here we are back at the grill. Open her up, take your tongs, and just, oh my, somebody's excited. <laughs> Gently rotate your steak, just a 90 degree turn. Perfect. Close her back up. Come back in. It's still so nice out tonight. Okay, now set your timer again for four minutes. Okay. Good to go. Woo! Now, our pasta water is just about to boil. We have our fancy little trumpets. I've never had these before, so I'm kind of excited. We'll see how they go. They didn't have this. It was supposed to be with tagliatelle, but unfortunately, the tagliatelle was sold out. I could not get it. So, we do what we can. You could also do this, I think, with a linguine. Would be quite nice. Or a fettuccine would probably work well. I think this said to cook until tender and golden brown, 12 to 15 minutes, which it hasn't been cooking that long, and these guys are like crispy. It's the funny thing about recipes. They're not always right. Okay, so we have a boil going over here for our pasta water. And I'm going to cook maybe about half the box. give it a little stir. And I'll give this a little stir. I'll double stir here. I'm starting to be a little concerned about this. In fact, I'm going to turn it off. So we're stirring until we get back to a nice rolling boil. Waiting for that to come back to boiling. will probably be right about the time that the timer goes off. I think I want, I want to taste one of these mushrooms, I'm curious. It's like a mushroom chip. I'm surprised they don't have mushroom chips. Maybe I'm on something. All right, so as I thought, we're coming to a boil here on, with the pasta right when our timer is going off for our four minutes. So we'll turn that off. 
pasta needs to go for six minutes. We'll turn that on. And now let's head back out to the grill. To the grill! All right, so here we are, back at the grill. And, whoo, still nice and hot. So now, with our steak, we will flip it and rotate it 90 degrees. So you're getting some beautiful grill marks there. You probably can't see them in this light, but you will when it's all done. Close her up. I'm gonna turn it down just a smidge because it's, it's running pretty hot here. Okay, and four minutes. So now we're back in the kitchen. We have our pasta going. And what I thought we'd do now, <laughs> this is today's experiment. So I came across this book, since this is a library show, I came across this book that I really loved that I read the other day by Zadie Smith. Now she's quite a prolific author, but I've never read any of her other books. And I just grabbed this one because it's, as you can see, it's tiny, easy to read. And they're actually just a series of six essays. Let me write, pardon me, let me read the back for you. Deeply personal and powerfully moving, a short and timely series of reflective essays by one of the most clear-sighted and essential writers of our time. Written during the early months of lockdown, Intimations explores feelings, ideas, and questions prompted by an unprecedented situation. What does it mean to submit to a new reality or to resist it? How do we compare relative sufferings? What is the relationship between time and work? In our isolation, what do other people mean to us? How do we think about them? What is the ratio of contempt to compassion in a crisis? When an unfamiliar world arrives, what does it reveal about the world that came before it? So let's see, we have three minutes on our pasta. We'll just we'll start one. This one is called Peonies. Just before I left New York, I found myself in an unexpected position. And don't think I've forgotten about the steak. I've got that on my mind too. We'll have to go get that in about two minutes. Clinging to the bars of the Jefferson Market Garden, looking in. A moment before, I'd been on the run as usual, intending to exploit two minutes of time I'd carved out of the 45 minute increments into which, back then, I divided my days. Each block of time packed tight and leveled off precisely, like a child prepping a sandcastle. Two free minutes meant a macchiato, in an ideal cashless world if nobody spoke to me. In those days, the sharp end of my spade was primed against chatty baristas, overly friendly mothers, needy students, curious readers, anyone I considered a threat to the program. Oh, I was very well defended. But this was a sneak attack by horticulture. Tulips, springing up in a little city garden from a triangle of soil where three roads met. Not a very sophisticated flower, a child could draw it. And these were garish, pink with orange highlights. Even as I was peering in at them, I wished they were peonies. City-born, city-bred, I wasn't aware of having an especially keen interest in flowers, at least no st interest strong enough to forego coffee. But my fingers were curled around those iron bars. I wasn't letting go, nor was I alone. Either side of Jefferson stood two other women, both around my age, staring through the bars. The day was cold, bright blue, not a cloud between the world trade and the old seven-digit painted phone number for Bigelow's. We all had somewhere to be, but some powerful instinct had drawn us here, and the predatory way we were ogling those tulips put me in mind of Nabokov, describing the supposed genesis of Lolita. As far as I can recall, the initial shiver of inspiration was somehow prompted 
by a newspaper story about an ape in the Jardin des Plantes, who, after months of coaxing by scientists, produced the first drawing ever charcoaled by an animal. This sketch showed the bars of the poor creature's cage. I've always been interested in that quote, without believing a word of it. Something inspired Lolita. I'm certain no primates were involved. The scientist offers the piece of charcoal expecting or hoping for a transcendent revelation about this ape, but the revelation turns out to be one of contingency, of a certain set of circumstances, of things as they happen to be. The ape is caged in by its nature, by its instincts, and by its circumstance. Which of these takes the primary role is for zoologists to debate. So it goes. I didn't need a Freudian to tell me that three middle-aged women, teetering on the brink of perimenopause, had been drawn to a gaudy symbol of fertility and renewal in the middle of a barren concrete metropolis. And indeed, when we spotted three, when we three spotted each other, there were shame-faced smiles all around. All right, let's stump our pasta. I'm going to go, let's see, let's go flip our steak. This is cooking on the run tonight. Cooking on the run. Ooh, we got some flame going here. Yowzers. Flame broiled. I'm going to say it's done. All right. That's that. Okay, now back to our pasta. And now we're actually going to use some of the mushroom water to bring this sauce with our mushrooms. Let's see. There we go. So we're going to add two-thirds of a cup to the skillet with the mushrooms. So I still have my little quarter of a cup guy here. You can also, rather than using the mushroom water, you could use some pasta water. If you remember to put it aside before you dump out your pasta in the sink. Okay, so we will bring this to a boil here with our mushrooms. about medium and now we will you can use some Romano cheese I just happen to have some Parmesan so I'm going to be using that get that ready we're gonna bring this to a simmer here coat 
until the sauce thickens slightly, coating the pasta. which I'd say we are there. Now we're gonna take this off of the heat. And we're going to add the parsley. I'm gonna save just a little aside to sprinkle on the top after it's all done. And half of the cheese, so we're going to use about two thirds of a cup of cheese. So let's see, that's a quarter cup. And that's about, ooh, that's about a third of a cup there. Mix that in. And you can add more pasta water if you need to make the sauce a little saucier. Pasta water or mushroom water, whatever you have handy. Okay. It is clinging to the pasta, so we are going to serve it with remaining cheese. And a little parsley on top. So let's see here. Let's get a little plate to have a taste test. Or a little bowl. A little bowl will do. how this turned out. I'm a little concerned about our uh, steak, to be honest. <laughs> we'll see. That might have to be uh, examined off camera. But we'll try our mushroom sauce here. So this is the pasta with the porcini mushroom butter sauce. Well, I guess you could put if you want. I don't think it really needs it. But you can uh, put a little more cheese on top. Boop. Love the fresh parsley. And even more red pepper flakes if you so desire. So this is actually delicious. I love mushrooms. I love pasta. It's pretty good. And I love garlic. <laughs> so, hey. And I actually really like this little pasta shape. Mm. So definitely a winner. I will let you know how things go with the steak later in the comments. And I hope everyone has a great night. Enjoy the evening. Get some good sleep tonight. I haven't slept in like four days, but tonight I will rest. So thank you everyone for joining me and please do join me next week at the same time. Bye.